So does this work? It definitely does. Well, first of all, I'm not going to talk about the world without oil or fossil fuels for that matter. I'm going to talk about Norway without oil. And there are two ways in which uh, you can talk about Norway without oil. Uh, first, you can ask, what would Norway be like if no oil had been found on the uh, Norwegian shelf? Uh, and secondly, you can ask, uh, what will Norwegians do when they run out of oil? Now, these uh, two questions uh, are interrelated, and I will talk about both. I should perhaps at this point make a claim to objectivity. Since uh, I'm not Norwegian, I have no reason to talk about Norway and Norwegians in more positive terms than they deserve. <laughs> so if there is uh, any problem with my objectivity, it has to do with my analytical abilities and not with my emotions. But having said that, I've been living here for a long time, so you'll probably hear me sliding occasionally into a we when I'm talking about Norway and Norwegians. So um, you often hear people ask the question, uh, uh, what shall we do when we uh, run out of oil? And uh, uh, behind that question, uh, there is a notion that uh, uh, Norway owes its riches primarily to oil. Now, uh, I'm not so sure uh, that that is correct, but I'll come to that. But uh, uh, the first thing we need to do when we're talking about this is that uh, we have to have some idea uh, how long would it take, or how long does it take until uh, Norway runs out of oil. All right. So, uh, so let's ask the question, uh, how long will it take until uh, we run out of oil? And if we look at the reserve figures, uh, we will see that uh, we have oil for only eight years. But uh, the oil production is not going to come to a complete stop suddenly. It's going to taper off gradually over time. So uh, this will be more like 15, 20 years. But uh, we have much more gas, natural gas. So if we uh, take the oil and gas together, then we will find that we have uh, petroleum for at least uh, 40 to 50 years. And uh, this figure is from the latest uh, national budget and shows a forecast of uh, production of uh, oil and gas. It ends in uh, 2030, and as you can see, we're already on the, on the decline, but uh, it'll take certainly many more years than up until uh, 2030 to uh, take out uh, what is left. So we're talking about uh, a time horizon of uh, 40 to 50 years. So, well, if that is the case, well, then we have to step back about 40 to 50 years, and ask uh, what visions did people then have about Norway beyond the year 2000? That should give us some guidance about uh, what kind of forecasts we can make uh, 40 to 50 years ahead. And, uh, well, uh, in 1960, this takes us back to 1960. In 1960, uh, oil production in Norway was a wild dream. Uh, there's a famous letter from the uh, foremost Norwegian geologists at the time to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Norway, saying that the uh, probability of finding oil on the Norwegian continental shelf is insignificant. Uh, what more uh, do we see if we uh, look back to uh, 1960? Well, in 1960, uh, fish and fish products were about 15% of all exports. The uh, gross revenues from shipping were almost as high as the revenues from the export of commodities. Uh, but Norway was already 
in uh, 1960. Quite a wealthy country, as these uh, slides uh, here show you. Norway in 1960 was not very far behind uh, its Scandinavian neighbors, Denmark and Sweden, in terms of uh, GDP per capita. What these curves show you uh, is GDP per capita. And uh, Norway was ahead of the Netherlands and the United Kingdom. Now, over this period of time, uh, Norway has overtaken such countries as uh, Japan and the United States in terms of GDP per capita and certainly outpaced the uh, Scandinavian neighbors. But again, in, uh, in 1960, Norway was already uh, quite a wealthy country. I have not been able to find much by way of serious documents uh, from 1960 or thereabout about what Norway would be like in 2000. I think that most people realize that uh, making such forecasts was a pretty hazardous thing to do. Uh, there were something like uh, long-term plans, yes, but they had a time horizon of three years and sometimes extended up to ten years. So that's what we have by way of plans. But there were, of course, people who had some ideas about what Norway and the world would be like uh, in 2000 and beyond. There's a very interesting paper published in a medical journal, in a Norwegian medical journal, by a medical doctor, speculating about what diseases Norwegian doctors would have to deal with uh, in 2000. I'm not going to get into that. But he made some uh, off-the-cuff remarks about other things. And he said that, well, in 2000, we might have small telephones in our buttonholes. That makes it possible for us to communicate over long distances. And we might have uh, color television sets, which we can put in our pockets. Now, these were pretty wild ideas in 1960, but uh, it wasn't really very far off the mark. Now, he may have expected, he didn't say so, but he may have expected that the Norwegian companies uh, would make these gadgets because at that time there was a budding uh, Norwegian electronics industry, but that industry uh, has now disappeared. So the gadgets we have of this kind, uh, they, come, they are made in other places. So, uh, uh, so what ideas uh, did the uh, long-term planners have uh, in 1960? Well, they looked back. They looked back at the 1950s. They looked back at a period of, uh, of very rapid economic growth, actually, in the 1950s. And uh, uh, they looked back at uh, impressive investments in infrastructure, investments in roads, investments in uh, aluminium factories, investments not least in hydropower. And uh, they expected uh, more of the same uh, to happen. Uh, at that time, there was a thriving uh, uh, industry producing electrical appliances for households, uh, refrigerators, stoves, and there was this uh, electronic industry uh, producing uh, tape recorders, radios, sound equipment, uh, things like that. Uh, that industry is now dead. So, uh, so there was not much of that sort happening. Uh, the planners uh, argued that uh, continued economic growth in Norway would have to come from manufacturing and services because the country was already at the end of the road when it came to utilizing natural resources. There was not more to be had from fish, timber, or whatever, except perhaps uh, further processing of products made of these uh, things. Uh, but... Uh, Continued economic growth would have to come from manufacturing and services based upon advantages, Norwegian advantages in terms of technology or in terms of organization. They uh, saw a big opportunity in the uh, then newly established European free trade area, which, by the way, is now defunct. Uh, it's been overtaken by the European Union and the agreements that some countries have with the European Union. Uh, 
They thought this would open up bigger markets for Norwegian products, but they also realized that the uh, European free trade area was a challenge. In order to survive in that kind of an environment, uh, you would need to produce uh, on, a on a large scale to, to, to utilize economies of scale. So uh, people had to be prepared for a radical restructuring of the industry. Uh, they welcomed uh, investment, of, uh, uh, investment from abroad, which would bring technology uh, and, and new industries. If we were to sum up the recommendations uh, very briefly, we could say something like uh, open markets, uh, adaptability, and uh, competitiveness. So, uh, what did the planners uh, otherwise foresee? They foresaw continued need for uh, uh, imports of capital, for financing infrastructure by borrowing abroad. And, uh, and they saw these opportunities in, uh, in uh, new industries uh, that would uh, be able to export to the uh, European free trade area. What they did not see, what they did not foresee, was that uh, in about 10 years' time, the main engine of growth in the Norwegian economy would be a natural resource, oil and gas. And they didn't even mention uh, another uh, natural resource-based industry, fish farming, which also is uh, an important uh, growth engine uh, in this country. And they certainly did not, see, not foresee that Norway would become a major lender to the world, major capital exporter in, uh, in about 20 years' time. So uh, what happened? Well, the industries that the planners uh, foresaw that would further develop, they died. They thought that uh, hydroelectric power might be uh, an advantage uh, for the Norwegian textile industry. Well, the textile industry died in the 1970s. And the electronic industry, which produced radio equipment, sound equipment, tape recorders, uh, record players, all those things, that industry disappeared also in the 1970s and, and 80s. So uh, what happened instead was that uh, new industry grew up or existing industry restructured uh, mainly, or you know, to a large extent, for deliveries to the petroleum industry. Companies started building oil platforms, cranes, pumps, valves, various gadgets that are needed uh, in, the, in the petroleum industry. So opportunities opened up in the petroleum industry as the petroleum industry grew up. The existing companies exploited them took them. New companies were established to uh, take advantage of the uh, opportunities provided by the, by the oil industry. On the basis, you might say, of the recipe that the planners of 1960 recommended, open markets, competitiveness, adaptability. So, um, nowadays, the uh, uh, industry that delivers equipment uh, to the uh, uh, oil industry is quite competitive, uh, sells a lot of its products uh, on uh, world markets, not just to the Norwegian uh, petroleum industry. And on some accounts, this industry is the uh, uh, second largest uh, export industry in Norway after the oil and gas industry. That gives us a clue about what will happen when the uh, oil and gas production starts to decline seriously. This industry, provided that it retains its competitiveness, will export its products to other parts of the world where there is demand for it, 
And uh, that then also uh, gives us some clue about what might happen to the national oil company, Statoil, uh, when uh, they run out of oil on the continental shelf. We can take a leaf out of the book of shipping, what has happened to Norwegian shipping. Norwegian ships are still plying the waves in all parts of the world, but they are not manned by Norwegians any longer. They are manned by Filipinos, by Indians, and many other nationalities. But the technological know-how, the know-how about markets, still resides in the Norwegian companies, companies that own these ships. This is what's very likely going to happen to Statoil. They will establish themselves in other provinces uh, around the globe, in other oil provinces, and make use of the technological expertise. Uh, there is going to be demand for oil for a long, long time to come. But the oil is going to come from more and more inaccessible and expensive places, more challenging places. So that's where the opportunities for, for start oil lie. And they have already begun to diversify themselves and establish themselves in, in other areas. Uh, when it then comes to long-term plans for what, what's going to happen in 40, 50 years, we are just as ignorant as our parents about what the world will be like in 2060 or whatever. So I don't think we uh, need to uh, think too seriously just yet in that direction. There's a long time still to go for making adjustments. But uh, what we have to be careful about is to rely on the same virtues that have served us so well in the past. Technological knowledge, maintain, build up technological knowledge and expertise, keep open markets, make sure that our firms are competitive, and then last but not least, make sure that we have a reasonably honest political environment. Uh, and an illustration about what that meant, what that has meant, I think we can take from the history of the, uh, oil, of the Norwegian oil industry. It has not developed exactly according to the book as at least some people would write it. In the beginning, uh, Norway had no expertise whatsoever to exploit the uh, oil and gas resources on the shelf. The pioneers were American companies. Philips Petroleum and others. These companies were obliged to raise Start Oil, the Norwegian company, as a cuckoo in the nest. They had to pay their expenses and take them on board to begin with. This was a national oil company owned by the government. And, uh, and Norwegian industry was favored when it came to uh, deliveries uh, to, 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 the, to the investments to the, on the continent as well. Uh, nevertheless, in a relatively short time, all these companies grew up into being competitive companies operating in an open market on an evil playing field, or an even play, playing field, just, just uh, with all the others. Because it was realized that competitiveness, open markets uh, were necessary things. To, to make the wheels go round. Another thing that has not, or would raise some eyebrows anyway, is the way we uh, uh, handle the profits from the oil extraction. They are, after all, as you know, quite substantial. 80% of these profits are taken by the government. Now, that would, in certain quarters, be uh, a source of corruption and favoritism. Uh, and sadly to say it is in many parts of the world. It has not been in this country. Uh, the oil wealth uh, has been saved. It has re it's been realized that the oil and gas we pump out of the ground uh, is wealth. And the very first thing we need to do when we get it out of the ground is to transform it into other forms of wealth, into renewable wealth. And this the uh, Norwegian politicians have managed to do. They are actually saving more than they need 
in order to preserve the wealth per capita. And here is a figure you can see of the development of the oil wealth in the ground and in the fund that has been built up by these oil revenues. You can see how the oil fund has been growing quite impressively uh, over the years. So, um, to get back to this question, or Norway without oil, what would Norway be like without oil? Well, actually, I think Norway would be doing quite fine, as it was in the 1960s. But we would be doing different things. This uh, industry that delivers things to the oil industry would never have developed without um, oil on the Norwegian shell. But what we would be doing, impossible to, say, to, to tell. Would it be making cars like the Swedes? Cell phones uh, like the Finns, wind turbines like the Danes, I don't know. And neither do I know anything about what we will be doing in uh, 40 or 50 years. But I'm pretty sure we'll be doing something sensible. If we continue to rely on the old good virtues, open market, competitiveness, and ability to change. So thank you for your attention.